Indian, dogfish, occasionally a short fin mako, but definitely a poor beagle. But the likelihood of you being attacked by a shark in British waters is very unlikely, unless you're in the British Basketball League and you've had to play against the Sheffield Sharks. Now, the story of this great British basketball franchise starts with a man from London who made his way to Sheffield in the late 80s, early 90s. One of the founders of the Sheffield Sharks is this man, Yuri Matushin. Now in London, he was the general secretary of the British University of Sport, and he came to Sheffield in 1991 to help stage the World University Games. Now, because of the World University Games, the Sheffield Arena was built to help stimulate sports such as basketball and ice hockey. Since 1994, Yuri has been held by a great team of business friends, including Jerry Montgomery, Sarah Bakovich, and John Tibbs. And in the last decade, a lot of tremendous work from Atiba Lyons and Karen Child. Basketball would take off in Sheffield after the 1991 World University Games, as the Sheffield Forgers would play in National Basketball League Division I, and Yuri Madison would be their basketball coach. During this time, they did really, really well, and in their final season, they finished fourth and won a trophy. They also were able to sign players such as Chris Finch, Roger Huggins, and Mike Payne. But the following year, they would get new ownership from Chris Wright, the co-founder of Chrysalis Records. And if you're wondering why they changed the name from Forges, which pretty much represented the city's still history to Sharks, it's because of this guy, Gudinski, the Australian entrepreneur that was like, mate, we need a new name and we need to be called the Sheffield Sharks. The next thing the Sharks would do would appoint a new head coach and they'd get this guy, Jim Brandon. He was drafted by the Boston Celtics and he was a pretty good basketball coach to say the least. So Sheffield Sharks were ready to make their debut season in the British Basketball League in the 1994-95 regular season. Roger Huggins would lead the way with the scoring along with star players such as Garnet Gale who proved to be one of the toughest perimeter players to guard in the British Basketball League. And they'd also have sharpshooters like Chris Finch. This team was ready to set the league on fire. The first piece of silverware to conquer would be the BBL Cup, and the Sheffield Sharks would obliterate every team that would get in their way, and then they would go on to play in the final against the Thames Valley Tigers in which they would win their first piece of silverware, the BBL Cup. But then the Thames Valley Tigers got their revenge just a few months later as they would go on to win the BBL Trophy against the Sheffield Sharks. Two teams and two finals. The Sheffield Sharks would finish their first season in the British Basketball League top of the table, winning their second trophy in their rookie season. They would match up in the playoffs against the very hardworking and inspiring Birmingham Bullets. And as the Bullets would cruise against the Sharks and take game one, the Sharks would have to go back to Sheffield and take care of business. But that's exactly what they did. On their own home court, they would let everyone know why they were top of the table and why they were champions. Sheffield Sharks fans were very excited to see their team potentially win a treble at Wembley. But the Sheffield Sharks would find out just how tough the postseason would be here in the British Basketball League because the team that they went up against were known as the giant killers here in the British Basketball League. They would take on in the semi-finals the Worthing Bears and the Worthing Bears as they dug to so many top teams would let the Sheffield Sharks know what it meant to be a champion in the BBL. However, because the Sheffield Sharks had won the league that year, that summer they would go compete in a very prestigious tournament amongst world champions of basketball. It's the London Arena and day one of three of the McDonald's Championships and also the start of the coverage of basketball here on Channel 4. On the Sharks would play against Italian champions Virtus Bologna, Maccabi Tel Aviv of Israel, Real Madrid of the ACB in Spain, Perth Wildcats in Australia, and the final one, the NBA champions of the Houston Rockets. The Sheffield Sharks were mixing it in with the big boys. And what a great experience and a great tournament it was for the team and British basketball. Now, the rookie season wasn't too bad for the Sheffield Sharks, but the two years after that, 
they weren't able to replicate the same success. So after two seasons of not winning a trophy, the Sheffield Sharks would make a big statement in the 1997-98 regular season by signing former British NBA superstar John Amici and rookie BBL player straight out of St. Joseph's University, Philadelphia, Terrell Myers. 1997-98 regular season of the BBL, here comes the first piece of silverware. The Sharks would take on the London Towers in the BBL Trophy Final. But this game would be decided with nine seconds left and the game tied at 79 apiece. This is when the rookie from St. Joseph's Philadelphia would make his name here in the British Basketball League. Four. Terrell Myers' big shot brought another trophy back to Yorkshire. And next season, expectations started to get bigger. Now the Sharks would lose John Amici, but other players would step up in the following season, the 1998-99 regular season. The Sheffield Sharks would have one very good season. It was his second season in the British Basketball League for Terrell Myers. And he got from his rookie year being an off-the-bench player who would average good numbers to the British Basketball League's best player. Every team went up against him, had a lot of issues guarding him. Midway through the season, it was very clear that this year in the British Basketball League, it was going to be between the Manchester Giants and the Sheffield Sharks. Terrell Myers, as always, would lead the way. The Sharks were becoming the toughest team in the British Basketball League. Any team they went up against, home or away, would be the same outcome. Chris Finch was leading on the great work from Jim Brandon and was leading the team onto their next silverware. Next stop, the BBL Cup. The Sheffield Sharks would make it to the BBL Cup final where they would play against the London Leopards, who are one of the BBL's favorite basketball teams. But it's a little bit of deja vu. With less than a minute to go in the game and it's tied, who do you think is going to get the last shot for the Sheffield Sharks? The Sheffield side, they've got to hit this and then they've got to defend hard. It's a high percentage, it's two points, and it's Myers gets in. It's 67 and Myers has 30 points and 9 out of 10 from the free throw line. He's got to be the most valuable player. Remarkable performance. And it's time out with 26.1 seconds left to be exact. If you guessed Terrell Myers, then you were right. Mr. Reliable. You play to compete. But inevitably, you want to play the game to win championships and be a winner on good teams. The BBL Cup is won. Next stop, winning the league. They could have won the league at Chester, but Chester won by three points, which meant the league was going to be decided on the last day against the Manchester Giants. And these two teams had already brewed up a little bit of a rivalry, so this was probably one of the most intense professional basketball games in the history of the BBL. Winner takes all. Both teams are tied on points. Sheffield allowed Manchester back in the title race. Remember, the winner of this game wins the BBL League. Well, we've still got three and a half seconds. We're still tied at 85. The best two teams in the league are going to win. To so for the third time, it's a little bit of deja vu. Game's tied. The league is on the line. Who do you think is going to get the last shot? Decided right here. The Giants, who have not led since the first quarter, are hanging on in with one defense. They're looking for Myers. Myers fakes it. Now Myers. Myers hit the winning shot in 1998 against the London Towers in the BBL Trophy Final. He hit the winning shot against the London Leopards in the 1999 BBL Cup Final. Is he about to hit the winning shot that will win the Sheffield Sharks the 1999 BBL League? Now There's a reason they call Terrell Myers the Iceman, because he's so cool under pressure. No, I'm not joking, that's serious. Anyway, Sheffield Sharks, one more trophy to go and they can win the trap. But this time, they go to Wembley, and they would face a team that they pretty much had beaten three times in the season. Sheffield would go into the playoff championship, top of the league, winning both the BBL Cup and the league as well, thanks to Terrell Myers on both occasions. Now all they had to do was win the treble, and they'd sweat the London Towers throughout the season three games to zero. So nothing to worry about, right? But unfortunately, history would repeat itself, and the Sheffield Sharks would succumb to another semi-final defeat, and the Wembley voodoo would still continue. Now, that summer going into the 1999-2000 regular season of the British Basketball League, the league would change into a new format. It was no longer one league, it was a Northern and Southern Conference. And some players would come in, such as Nate Ryan King, and some players would leave who were fan favorites. Travis Conlon, who was a fan favorite of Sheffield, had made the move from Yorkshire to Lancashire. He'd signed with the Manchester Giants. 
So on the opening day of the BBL's regular season 1999-2000, the Manchester Giants would get their revenge, but the two teams would meet again in yet another final, this time the BBL Cup. I mean, these two are like a match made in heaven. Last year, they're competing for the BBL League, and this year, they're competing for the BBL Cup. But Sheffield's the team that want to hold on to it, because they were last season's winners after Terrell Myers hit the winning shot against the London Leopards. Sheffield Sharks were looking to hold on to the BBL Cup as they were last season's winners, but Manchester were looking to take it away. But the Giants weren't taking it away, that's for sure. The Sheffield Sharks have proved to the basketball world in Great Britain that they were the greatest team in the British Basketball League. Yet again, they would defeat the Manchester Giants and win for consecutive years the BBL Cup. But yet again, no playoff championship won. The Sharks had gone into the following season with pretty much the same core of players they had from last year with players such as Nate Ryan King, Mike Payne. But the thing for them was they had to keep on improving. They were very good in the regular season, but one thing was known about the Sheffield Sharks was that they just couldn't capitalize in the postseason. Wembley, here we go again. Sheffield Sharks would make it to the final once again. And this time at the Wembley Arena, they would take on the dark horse of the British Basketball League, the Leicester Riders. The Leicester Riders were having a pretty good season. They'd already won one trophy this season under head coach Billy Mibbs and signed a whole bunch of players that really helped them get that far. The question was, could the Dark Horses really take on and defeat the mighty great Sheffield Sharks? Terrell Myers had won the league MVP. He was on fire this season. Sheffield Sharks looked invincible. Surely they weren't going to get beat by the Leicester Riders. Okay, okay, but surely, right? Sheffield Sharks, who just seem to be invincible, dominate everybody in the regular season. Surely the story isn't going to be the same. But that is how destiny went. The Leicester Riders defied all odds and won their first ever playoff championship in the British Basketball League. I don't think anybody would have predicted that result for the Leicester Riders to upset the Sheffield Sharks. But the Sheffield Sharks have proven to be this dominant force in the regular season. Come postseason, something's just not clicking. So no doubt they're going to get there again, right? Exactly one year later, the Sharks had another chance. This time they would take on the Chester Jets. Could they break the Wembley curse? Could they finally win at Wembley? But unfortunately for the Sharks, the Wembley voodoo would continue as they would lose to the Chester Jets, who completed a jet wash and cleared a treble this year in the British Basketball League. And unfortunately, the Sheffield Sharks lost again. I mean, it is like a curse or something. As I said, Sheffield Sharks always seem to be the greatest basketball team in the BBL regular season. But as soon as they get to that playoff final, the 2002-2003 regular season of the British Basketball League proved to be yet another successful year for Sheffield Sharks. Having players such as Rob Yonders and high-flying Jerry Williams going in for a monster dunk. Sheffield were taking the league over. Literally any team that played them were getting beat regularly in the 20s and the 30s. Sheffield proved to be arguably the best team in the British Basketball League that year. And the final game of the season would see them take on the Brighton Bears that would go for the title. And with two points down, Brighton would have a chance to tie the game up. But it just wasn't meant to be. And the Sheffield Sharks would be crowned champions of the 2002-2003 regular season of the British Basketball League. The fans and the players and the leadership in Sheffield all celebrated emphatically as they had won the league yet again. 2003 would be the last season for Chris Finch as the Sheffield Sharks as he would move on. And as they did with Chris Finch before, where he was a player and then promoted him as a coach, they would do the same again. This time, they would promote Peter Scannerbury as their new head coach of the Sheffield Sharks. Scans had joined the Sheffield Sharks midway through the 1998-99 regular season. And his first year as coach of the Sheffield Sharks, his first piece of silverware to win was the BBL Cup, where they won very emphatic over the Scottish Rocks. They would lose the league title to the Brighton Bears, but that wasn't really what was on the mind of the Sheffield Sharks, as Pete Scannerbury knew there was one trophy they still had left to win in the franchise's history. The playoff championship. The first team that the Sheffield Sharks had to face on the way to the final were the Thames Valley Tigers, one of Coach Scannerbury's old teams that he played for in the early stages in the British Basketball League. On the next round, they went up against the London Towers, a team that the Sheffield Sharks know too well. After defeating them in the trophy final in 1998 when Terrell Myers hit that big three-pointer. But the Sheffield Sharks had won, and now they are on their way to the final. The question was, could they break the voodoo? Can they win the playoff championship final? They would make it to the playoff championship, and they would face against the Chester Jets, the team that beat them previously. The question is, could Sheffield finally lose the Wembley voodoo? Could they lose the playoff final curse? For 10 years, the Sheffield Sharks had dominated the British Basketball League, winning every single trophy except the postseason championship, the playoff championship. And finally, they could celebrate. The curse was over. Sheffield Sharks had won the postseason BBL playoff championship against the Chester Jets.
In the 2006-07 regular season of the BBL, the Sheffield Sharks weren't able to recash the same success that they had in the early 90s, but Jeff Bonds was named co-MVP alongside Brian Dukes of the Guildford Heat. A few seasons later, the club would take a different turn, as they would appoint Atiba Lyons as their new head coach. Again, a man that used to play for the club is now the head coach. And you'll notice in the club's history, since 1994, they've only had four basketball coaches. But it was also a new player they would sign that would be the new face of their franchise till this very day. They signed a Canadian power forward who went to the University of Loyola, Maryland who in his four years of playing NCAA Division I basketball would average a total of 11 points and eight rebounds. This guy would go on to be the future of the Sheffield Sharks. Atiba Lyons had a very, very good start to his career as player coach of the Sheffield Sharks. And in the 2009-10 regular season of the British Basketball League, their first test was to take on the Cheshire Jets for the BBL Cup. The Sharks would completely overwhelm the Cheshire Jets on defense, not allowing them any time or space to get into their offense, completely swarming and overwhelming them. The Sharks would then go on to win the final and let everyone know in the BBL that they were not out of the picture, that they still meant business and that there was more to come. The Sheffield Sharks dynasty was now being led by player coach Atiba Lyons, and he'd already got his coaching career off to a great start. While Mike Cook was the most valuable player in the British Basketball League, Tafari Tony also made the team of the year that season as well. The following season in 2011. 12 BBL teams wanted to be here, but only two are now left standing and they'll fight it out for the first piece of silverware of the season. The Sheffield Sharks were looking to defend and take back the BBL Cup. And they would be led by Mike Tuck and Steve D'Agostino, who would end the game with eight three-pointers, finishing eight for 10 with a total of 35 points. No coincidence whatsoever that he was named the game's MVP in the BBL 2011 Cup, and the Sharks would bring it back home. The British Basketball League had changed a lot since the 90s and early 2000s, and the success of the Sheffield Sharks wasn't that it wasn't great, it just wasn't the same. But 2012, 2013, here comes another trophy. The Sharks would take on the Leicester Riders for the 2013 BBL Trophy. And a familiar rivalry. Think about it, in 2001, they met in the BBL Championship and the Sharks were the powerhouse, the Riders were the underdog. But this time, the roles had reversed. But there wasn't gonna be another Leicester victory. There wasn't gonna be another dominant performance. Instead, the Sharks, led by BJ Holmes, would completely dominate this final and bring home the BBL Trophy for the Sheffield Sharks. DJ Holmes would lead the way that night. He'd be named the game's MVP with 25 points, scoring five three-pointers, putting his name down in the history of legends of the Sheffield Sharks. In 2016, the club made it back to the playoff championship. But this time, we weren't playing at Wembley. This time, we were at the O2 Arena. Sheffield and Leicester fans all came in to watch their teams compete. And Mike Tuck, yet again, would lead the way, winning the game's MVP. And they're almost like a repeat of the 2001 playoff final between the Sharks and the Riders. Yet again, the Sharks were the underdogs. Leicester Riders, at this point in time, were dominating the British Basketball League. But the Sheffield fans, they could feel proud. The coaching staff, the players, it was time for them to celebrate as the club had won their second ever playoff final in the club's history. The Atiba Lions era of the Sheffield Sharks was reliving the glory days. Just like in the 90s and the early and mid 2000s, the Sheffield Sharks were back on top of the British Basketball League. But also, the Sheffield Sharks, not only are they great on the court, they're also excellent off the court. This week, the Hoops cameras were invited to check out two BBL team's community programs. Chris, with the Sheffield Sharks basketball team, you have a, a program called Playing for Success. Talk to us about that. We've always been big in the, in the community, and we had a chance to formalize our community program. Here is an excellent example of the Sheffield Sharks community-based program. Cannon's medical collaboration worked with the Sheffield Sharks Basketball Club Respect Initiative, and a prize was given to the team that won the Respect Basketball Tournament. In this video, you can see that the Ballafield Primary School got to take a tour around Old Trafford to see the Manchester United Stadium and meet some of the players. This was all done through the initiative and hard work of the Sheffield Sharks community-based program. And that, my friends, is the history of the Sheffield Sharks. But it's not over there. Because the Sheffield Sharks are not only a team that dominates the British Basketball League on the court, they're also an elite program that does a lot of community work for the city of Sheffield and beyond. See, being a community-based club and a lot of community work is huge to their identification. 
The Sharks have always implemented significant community education programs for the past 20 years, including playing for success, Ebron Be Healthy, Sport Enterprise Challenge, and the Canon Respect Program. These initiatives all have teaching staff and a study support center, and the Sheffield Sharks work with over 1,500 school children a year. That is the impact this British basketball league team has on the court, and more importantly, off the court. That is the history of the Sheffield Sharks.